Hi, I'm Father David. Welcome to the, the Mass of St. Francis of Assisi. We're celebrating his great feast, as you can see, with this beautiful painting behind me, done by Father Michael Reyes of St. Francis. So we're keeping the festivities all around us as we celebrate this liturgy in St. Francis' honor. Today with us will be Brother Jimmy Kernan, who's a great friar. He's in simple vows, which means in the next couple of years, he'll take solemn vows. And right now he lives in Chicago and he is studying to be a molecular engineer. Right, where do you hear about that a little more? It's a, it's a fabulous uh, field that deals with climate change and how we can better use the energy resources we have. So we have our, our eyes on him to be really big in that field. So anyway, as we prepare to begin, remember that we are praying for you and for all your loved ones as we celebrate this great feast of St. Francis of Assisi. The heavens are telling the glory of God And all creation is shouting for joy Come dance in the forest, come play in the field And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, happy feast day. We are gathered here now to celebrate the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, who is the founder of our Franciscan order of the Poor Clare Sisters and of the Secular Franciscan order. He embraced the world with love and compassion and as they often say about Francis, into a cold and uncaring church and world walked St. Francis of Assisi and everything changed. Keeping that in mind then, and looking at him as one who walked in the footsteps of Christ, let us pause and call to mind those times when we have not been Christ to one another. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us praise our God in song. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God highest and on earth peace on earth peace to people of goodwill we praise you we bless you we adore you we glorify you we give you thanks for your great glory lord god heavenly king oh god Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Sisters and brothers, let us pray. Loving God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ 
in poverty and in humility, grant that, by walking in Francis's footsteps, we may follow your Son, and through joyful charity, come to be united with you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we're very happy to have with us Brother Jimmy Kernan, who will be doing our readings with us. Thank you. A reading from the book of Sirach. Behold him in whose time the house of God was renovated, in whose days the temple was reinforced, in his time the reservoir was dug, the pool with a vastness like the seas. He protected his people against brigands and strengthened his city against the enemy. Like a star shining among the clouds, like the full moon at the holy day season, like the sun shining upon the temple, like the rainbow appearing in the cloudy sky. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You, Lord, are my allotted portion. You, Lord, are my allotted portion. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion in my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. You, you Lord, Lord, are, are my, my allotted portion. portion. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. You, you Lord, Lord, are my, my allotted, allotted portion. portion. You will show me the path to life fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. You, Lord, are my, my allotted, allotted portion. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, may I never boast of anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through it the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. It means nothing whether one is circumcised or not. All that matters is that one is created anew. Peace and mercy on all who follow this rule of life and on the Israel of God. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the brand marks of Jesus in my body. Brothers and sisters, May the favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, Jesus spoke like this. Father, Lord of heaven and earth, to you I offer praise for what you have hidden from the learned and the clever you have revealed to the merest of children. Father, it is true. You have graciously willed it so. Everything has been given over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son but the Father, and no one knows the Father but the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. So I say to you, come to me, all who are weary, and find life a burden. I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden 
is light. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The most favorite place on earth for St. Francis of Assisi was a little chapel on the side of the road in the lower part of his beloved city of Assisi. Francis once actually told the friars that they should never ever leave this little chapel and that if someone threw them out of the door, they should sneak in through the window. He loved his little chapel of Our Lady of the Angels. And over the years, a beautiful basilica was built over this and called Our Lady of the Angels in Lower Assisi. It was large and magnificent and filled with beautiful statues and frescoes and could hold hundreds and hundreds of people. Do you think this stunning basilica took the place of the little humble chapel that Francis loved so much? Nope. The large church was built over the small chapel. The beautiful basilica was covering the small, humble chapel for hundreds of years and protected it from all kinds of weather and trauma that could have destroyed the little chapel, the little chapel of the angels. I believe this is like how some people come to God through the church. Some can come into the church community in its magnificent churches of large cathedrals and beautiful statues and awe-inspiring frescoes and paintings and the beautiful rituals of the church and our music. There are those others, though, who come to God through a simple, humble church, a compassionate little chapel church that is open to anyone who seeks to belong. And as Jesus said, to be comforted and to be healed and to quietly become a part of a community of love. It's almost like big church, little church. And we need both of these. The big church protects the little church and shows the world the powerful love of Jesus Christ. Its largest and its majestic strength are a witness to the power of the gospel. But the little church is the heart. The big church would only be like a big majestic palace without the little chapel heart in its very center. The gospel today tells us we need both. The gospel today has Jesus asking us to come to him for comfort, kind of like that little church. I often think of the little church as the Franciscan heart of the big church. Some people come to God through that big, beautiful church, and some find God in the heart, warmth, and acceptance of the little Franciscan chapel of the angels, the one that Francis loved so very, very much. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God forever. O Lord, as we bring you these offerings, we pray that they may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mysteries of the cross, which St. Francis so ardently loved and embraced. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. 
We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the festival of St. Francis, you build your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy Franciscan life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answering his prayer. And so now we join the company of angels and saints and we sing the praise of you as without end we acclaim in the words of the prophet Isaiah, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Therefore, make these gifts holy, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his life, death, and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope, and all your holy people throughout the world. Today, we remember in a special way all of those who live with a Franciscan heart. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. In a special way, Father, remember all the deceased loved ones of those of us who are with us watching now. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, St. Francis, St. Clair, St. Anthony, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you always through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. gathering our needs and the needs of the church and one another, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on any sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On this great feast of St. Francis, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring all of us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, grant us through these holy mysteries that we have received, that imitating the charity and the love of you and your son of St. Francis, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation and the joy of all people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank each and every one of you for being with us during the celebration. I want to thank my brother Jimmy here for all of his, uh, his wonderful work here this summer. He's been with us all summer. Uh, he's been working with Friends of the Poor, which is one of the housing projects that the Friars have had for about 40 years almost yes, now, yeah, I think, yeah. 40 years. And uh, it's, it houses schizophrenic homeless people here in New York. There are housing now about 280, I believe, is it? Yeah, around there. Around there, yeah. So it's wonderful work that the Friars have begun years ago and is still continuing. So please be generous in, in all of your donations and gifts and, and support to the Franciscan Friars. Without you, we couldn't do anything that we do to help so many who come to us in need. So thank you. And on this wonderful Feast of St. Francis, let us pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face to you and smile on you always and everywhere. May God bless you and all of those who you love and care for. May God give you peace and comfort, the God we call Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Have a great feast and happy feasting. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field. And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Sing, sing to the glory.
That was a wonderful feast celebration in honor of St. Francis of Assisi. And I know he's smiling down on us from heaven, thrilled with everything that we do as followers in his name. I think that one of the things we want to remember about St. Francis is that he thoroughly and completely lived his life centered first on the gospel of Jesus, then on the Franciscan friars, his brothers, but he never, ever, ever forgot the poor. And that's what Francis of Assisi is really so much loved for, is his love of the poor, and actually also his love of creation. It's important to remember that one of the things about St. Francis is, if you remember his Canticle to the Sun, he talked about Brother Sun, Sister Moon, even Sister Death, Sister Water, Brother Fire, all of those kinds of things. Sister, Everything was brother and sister with him because he felt a relationship with everyone and everything. He truly is the saint of creation. So that's something we have to remember too, especially when we're having so many problems in our world with climate and climate change. We need to look at that. Francis would be the one for us to really emulate and look at in terms of his love and care for creation and also his love and care for the poor. As you know, we friars try desperately to help all of the poor who come to us, over two million people a year. And now that we're including ourselves in the whole country all together, that's gonna to be even more. The soup kitchens we run, the shelters we run, everything, all done to help the poor and the needy, children, women and men, whole families who come to us. We need your help to continue doing that. We need your, your spiritual support with your prayers, and we need your financial support. So especially on this great feast of St. Francis of Assisi, please remember God's generosity to us as St. Francis did, and please be as generous as you can with God's poor, the poor that the Franciscan friars tried to help every single day. So please help us help them, and happy feast day on this great feast of St. Francis who loved everyone, creation, his sisters and brothers, and of course, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Happy Feast Day.